In this video, we're going to look at how to set up the center of mass of a volume. Now, um, the center of mass of a volume uh, is going to require us to compute four integrals. We saw in the two-dimensional case that you needed three integrals. We're going to have four integrals to do in this case in three variables. Um, these problems are extremely tedious and extremely long to do. And so sometimes uh, instructors will just ask students to set up the problems rather than do all of the computations unless they're very, very carefully selected so that they don't kind of blow up algebraically in your faces. Uh, and so that's what we're going to focus on in this video is how to set them up. And uh, we will leave the integration um, for the reader, so to speak. Now, uh, the center of mass um, formulas that we need, we need three moments of mass because we have three coordinates. Now, the moments of mass are defined in terms of their distance from a plane, one of the coordinate planes. Um, and it's the missing variable that is defining that distance. So the moment of mass from the xy plane is, if you imagine the xy plane, the z direction is perpendicular to that plane. So this is actually the, com the moment that you need to calculate the z coordinate and the integral that we need for that moment of mass from the xy plane is to multiply the density function by z. Um, the limits of integration that we're gonna have in each of our cases is gonna depend um, on the surface, obviously, the specifics. But once you set up the, set the mass itself, the total mass, you don't have to redo the limits of integration. Those will always remain the same. The only thing that will change will be that you're gonna multiply the density function by z. Um, in the moment of mass from the yz plane, that if you think about the yz plane, the perpendicular direction from that is x. That's the one missing from the subscript. And so you're going to multiply the density function by x there. And then for the moment of mass from the xz plane, then that's, again, picturing it, the perpendicular direction um, that you're actually measuring is the y direction. And so you're going to multiply the moment of mass times y. If you've done anything related to statistics, um, this, this idea of finding the center by multiplying by the corresponding variable should be familiar. Now, um, when we get these moments, of course, then uh, we choose m, y, z, the notation is missing the x, divided by the total mass to get x bar, which is our center of mass in the x direction, m, x, z, the one missing the y, uh, divided by the total mass gives us y bar, which is our center from the y component from, in the y direction. And then m, x, y, the z is the component that's missing, divided by the total mass that gives us z bar, which is the center of mass in the z direction. And of course, um, keep in mind that um, we will use these same formulas, these same setups when we convert to cylindrical or spherical coordinates, we will just simply have to translate these multiplied by z, multiplied by x, multiplied by y into the corresponding coordinate system that we need. And our final answer is going to always be in rectangular coordinates, is always going to be x, y, z. It's not going to be in those other systems. So if you need it to be in cylindrical or you need it to be in spherical in the end, which again is not typically done in um, college, uh, you know, for freshman, sophomore level calculus courses, um, you don't need to convert that. That's not expected. All right, so let's look at our three examples. We're going to start with our rectangular coordinates. And in a previous video, we calculated um, the total mass. Um, bounded by this plane, z equals 12 minus 4x uh, minus 2y in the first octant. And our density function was x, y, z. So once we, and we, we went through all of that, that um, doing that integration with the x, y, z and the algebra, as you recall, uh, if you've watched that video, kind of blew up in our faces. 
uh, we ended up having to square this. And then when we put the Y in, we had to square it and cube it and fourth power it in some cases. And the algebra became quite tedious and I didn't even do all of it then. Um, you can expect the same sort of thing to occur again, depending on the kind of density function you have. Um, if you're missing a component, that component will be much easier. Um, you may still have to distribute, but you shouldn't have to foil and things like that. Um, but whatever you end up with for this mass function, uh, you're going to stick with this. The only thing that you're going to change is that for the mxy, you're going to multiply this by z. And so when you integrate, you'll get z squared. Um, now, when you integrate that, you'll get z cubed as an outcome, and then you'll have to cube this bad boy. Again, algebra, tedious, um, but it is what it is, depending on the function you have. Um, the mxz, again, same density function, same limits of integration, you just multiply by y. So you'll confront, confront this extra y term when you do your y integral. And then the myz, Again, density function, same limits of integration multiplied by x. You Everything will be the same from your original mass integral until you get to the last step. And again, I mean, you're doing four integrals. Um, if the first one is tedious, uh, you can bet the next ones are going to be. Uh, and there's just not a lot that you can do about that. Um, the problems are not that difficult per se. Um, certainly less difficult than some of the sort of vector field stuff. But nonetheless, um, these centers of mass problems can just take a while because there is so much integrating to do. And in some cases, lots and lots of algebra. Now, again, in our in a previous video, we looked at finding the total mass for um, a particular volume in cylindrical coordinates. In this case, our density function was just R. And uh, the second R comes from the R dz dr d theta. And then uh, we had our limits of integration set up. And this was our original total mass function. Now, again, we're going to set up our um, moments in the same configuration. All of this is going to be the same. The only thing is we're going to replace the coordinates as necessary. So when we calculate our moment for the x, y direction, we don't really have to do anything because in cylindrical coordinates, z is z. And so you're done. That you just now integrate that. And then um, you'll have some, again, you'll have a little bit of extra algebra to do because this will become z squared. And then so you have to FOIL that. But fundamentally, you don't have to do some of these algebraic substitutions to change the coordinates. Now, you will have to do that for the mxz uh, and the myz components. Here, you're going to plug in y times your whole integral. And the y will have to be replaced with r sine theta. And so you'll end up integrating r cubed. And then when you do theta, of course, you will still have a theta component to deal with. And then finally, myz, you multiply your density and your whole integral, all the limits stay the same, but you multiply the function by x, x gets converted to r cosine theta. And so similarly to the previous case, you get r cubed and a theta function. And then again, you would integrate from there. Uh, the algebra will be pretty similar in both of these cases until you get to the last step. So that because they're similar, that will help simplify a process a little bit. Now, when we do our volume in spherical coordinates, again, always, once you've come up with your mass integral, this was the volume inside a the first octant of a sphere. Um, and the density was rho cosine phi. And then the rho squared sine phi came from the dv. And we simplified that. All of that will remain the same. But now we're going to, when we multiply by x, y, and z, we're going to have to replace them with spherical coordinate representations. So x will have to get replaced with rho cosine theta sine phi. 
and y will have to get replaced with rho sine theta sine phi, and z will have to get replaced with rho cosine phi. So if we look at those integrals, mxy, start with the math total mass integral, multiply inside your integral by z, replace your z with rho cosine phi, which is what z is in spherical coordinates, and then you end up with this integral. Now, in this case, um, the rho to the fourth is just a different power of rho. Uh, you're plugging in a constant, so that won't be too bad. Uh, here, you end up with cosine squared phi sine phi instead of just one cosine phi, but it will still be the same substitution. You'll just get a slightly different power in the end. Uh, for the mxz, you're going to multiply inside your integral by y. y will get replaced with rho sine theta sine phi. Now, when you simplify this, we have a new theta that we'll worry about when we do our theta step. And the second thing is we now have cosine phi sine squared phi, two sine phi's. Um, in that case, you're going to have to switch your substitution so that sine is your u and cosine is your theta, whereas up here, cosine was u and sine was your du. And then finally, for myz, we would multiply inside our same mass integral, but now by x, we replace x with rho cosine theta sine phi. And again, we're going to have to let u be sine and um, uh, cosine be du. And then we have our cosine integral to deal with in our theta, which is nu. Uh, in spherical coordinates, uh, as long as things are not dependent upon functions, these are actually not too bad. Um, certainly by comparison with the rectangular coordinates and the plane example, those examples with the plane are easy to visualize and often very easy to set up, but very hard to execute. Whereas sometimes, particularly in spherical coordinates, um, they can be a little confusing because of our lack of experience with uh, spherical coordinates to set up. But once we set them up, the integration actually isn't all that bad.